Hello, Ruth Lorenzo. Hello. Hi, Ruth. Hola. Hola. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Que pasa? What's up? Well, nothing much. Um, just getting ready for a busy day. Yeah. How about you? What about me? I don't think you want to know. <laughs> uh, my life's boring. Cool. <laughs> no. I hear you just got back from Spain, right? Is that right? Yeah, I went to Spain for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So how was your holiday? What did you get up to? Uh, well, actually, it wasn't much of a holiday. I've been a housewife for like two weeks. My housewife? Sister had a baby. Oh. Yeah, my sister had a baby, so I've been basically out there looking after her other son and just enjoying my family. Yeah. Cooking. Do you get to see your family often? Um, I try and go to Spain as much as I can. Um, sometimes more than others and, you know, how it is. When you're touring and gigging and stuff like that, you don't get to. You just play it by ear, so. But I try and go every month. Yeah. Yeah, it was lovely. It was like, like 27 degrees every oh, day. Yeah. And um, so it was really, really nice. Okay, so most people remember you from X Factor 2008. That was a pretty long time ago. Yep, it three was. years exactly. I think. Three, yeah. So, how was that experience looking back? How was it for you? Um, it was amazing. I would not change a thing from it, and I would do it all again. Um, uh, like, it's literally changed my life in every way, and I'm able to be living in London and making music, writing for other people, apart from myself and it's an incredible experience yeah um you had the, probably the most memorable performance of that series you know what i'm talking about ruth um yeah. purple rain yeah yeah purple that, rain. i mean you, it's, it's amazing you know um that song nobody really wanted me to sing that song um they thought it wouldn't suit me and it's there you know and everybody was recommending me all their singing songs but my mentor, which was amazing, Danny you know, um, she said, well, if you want to think that, you go ahead and do it. And so I did, and, and you know, that's, that's something you learn. You always need to listen to your heart and, and go by your gut instinct. She's never going to let you down. Yeah, that's good words. Yeah, well, you started a trend with that song. Have you noticed that every year on X Factor, they've been singing Purple Rain every year since? Yeah, I think Sam and Kat was trying to recreate the moment, but it's like, it wasn't rehearsed. Yeah. It wasn't into camera. It wasn't, you know, I was singing, I was singing for my survival on the show. So you can't recreate a moment like that, you know? Yeah. So I think it was very sincere and that's what people, because it's not perfect. My vocal wasn't that great. Um, I was tired. I was scared. So I was out of tune in many places. It wasn't perfect, but you could feel the emotion. And that's something you can't recreate. You can't recreate a feeling, you know? Yeah, I, I get that, yeah. So, I mean, Purple Rain was one of the defining moments for you. How was the public re reaction like for that? Well, I mean, I still get stopped in the streets and people say to me, Purple Rain. I mean, um... I I was um, at a really lovely place near Covenant Garden the other, the other day, just like a few weeks ago, and I saw damn Judy Dench, um, and I went up to her thinking, well, she's never going to remember me, you know, but um, I want to say hello because she had lovely words for me when we went to the uh, 007 premiere. And I went up to her and I said, hi, excuse me, my name is, and she looked at me and she said, you're Ruth Lorenzo and your version of Purple Rain was incredible, you know, and it's, it's something that, you know, even up to today is still there and it's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to see when you follow your heart is never going to let you down. Yeah. Well, that's pretty big having Judy Dench as one of your fans. I mean, that's... She's so cool. She's amazing. Yeah, that, that would be pretty cool. Um, it is fair to say that you were probably the eye candy of that series. I mean, Simon Cowell, Simon Cowell fancied you. You are too nice. I'm too nice, am I? I mean, I fancied you every, I think every guy fancied you. Oh, thank you. Well, you captivated the audience with 
how should we say, um, <laughs> Le Muchachas? Yeah. Yeah, I, I well, mean, tell Monica me about it. was always lovely to me, and um, for me it was incredible to see that, you know, he thought I was attractive, which to my own eyes, you know, as a woman, you're never happy with yourself. You always want to be better, you always want to be looking nicer, and, and I've always felt like I was a little bit overweight, too big. You know, for the for the um, image that we have today of beauty. I mean, even though it's changing with Beyonce, with Rihanna, and with women that look like women, you know. Yeah, the curvy um, women. That's right. So it it gave me loads of confidence, and and I just thought, you know, what, I'm just not going to think about it. And and if they give me this really incredible dress to wear, I'm just going to do it. And you know. I'll hold my head up high. Yeah, no, no. Well, I think you're perfect the way you are. So, Thank you. you know, you know. <laughs> you spoke earlier about um, Danny Minogue. I mean, you wrote a song for her because you're beautiful for her album. Yeah. Do you still keep in touch? And are there any, you know, collaborations in the works? Um. Yeah. She. Danny is like she's still a mentor to me. Sometimes I email her and, and I say, oh my God going on or you know I ask for advice she, she's had a pretty incredible career in her life loads of strive and, and struggle and success um, so I do keep in touch with her because um, you're beautiful was the song that I was writing for my own album and I played her her one day and she just fell in love with it and, and she said oh my gosh I love this song and I said well I'm writing so much do you want to have it and and she was like, really, can I please, would you mind if I try and sing it in the studio? And um, I know she's, uh, she wants to release music. I'm not sure when she's going to do it, but I've got a few tracks lined up for her. Um, and I'm writing with incredible people. Some of them I can't really say their names because it's all top secret. But um, I'm writing for a really good jazz artist from the States. Uh, for Marta Santa, which is a Spanish uh, singer. She's like the equivalent of Madonna in Spain. Um, and, you know, she's really incredible, too. Um, I've had a couple of number ones in Spain with a boy band. And my writing career is going pretty well. Um, I was in the studio the other day with um, Rhonda Smith, which is the basis for Prince, and she plays bass for someone that uh, I'm writing with at the minute. And, and you know, she, she had heard of Purple Rain and Prince had heard of Purple Rain. And, you know, it, it's just X Factor changed my life. And it's amazing. Yeah. Um, there's so many people that are, are, have anger um, towards the show or towards the things that happen afterwards. But I think, I think however you treat the things that are given to you, that's how you will progress or not progress or, or be happy or be angry, you know? You need to take everything and just try and make things not destroy or, you know, you need to try and be positive and that's what's happened to me and, and this is why I'm writing so many incredible people and um, my album is taking ages but I just need to get this right. You only get one chance to this and, and you know, it's quite, it's quite a fight. I love it. Is there is there a reason why you, I mean, you parted ways with a big record label to do your own thing? You went with an independent label because you wanted to get the material right. Was that a reason why you decided? Yeah, to I. Yeah, it's really hard, you know, when you come when you come out of the X Factor, you're normally seen as a product. Um, everything has to be a product because a product is something that is that sells. Right? And to be able to make it in the music industry, you need to sell records. But um, sometimes the perception they have of you straight away after the show is not actually what you really are about. You know, yeah. I wasn't only a pair of boobs and big hair. Um, you know, so <laughs> I had to really, really, really sit down with myself and... and consider what I wanted from my career and what I've always wanted is longevity and that is very hard to get it's 
very hard to to be like Tina Turner, 85 and on stage, you know, and that's what I want. And you don't get that by making a, like, a really pop thing that's going to come out for two weeks in the number one charts and then that's it, you've forgotten, you know? Yeah. I did not want that, and I still don't want it. I'd rather be a writer, you know? I'd rather be doing what I'm doing instead of being forgotten like that and making something that I'm not proud of. Yeah, I think that's why most people were 